Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. Over the last few months, I've been working towards painting the hull. First, I glassed over the deck hull joint to seal it. Then I spent a ton of time fairing the hull and rounding over the radius of the deck hull joint. And then last week, I was almost able to finish applying epoxy primer. I should receive another shipment of paint in a few days, and then I can get back to painting the hull. But now that I'm definitively done fairing, I might as well grab some measurements. When I purchased Athena, her deck hull joint was covered with what you'll find aboard most modern boats, which is an extruded aluminum tow rail. And I'm not gonna be putting a new one of those on because they are ridiculously expensive. Instead, for every meter, I'm gonna be through bolting a custom made little stainless bracket. And to those brackets, I'm gonna be bolting a wooden plank, something the size of this roughly. This is eight centimeters high. So it looks sort of something like that. Of course, you're gonna have to imagine this little piece of wood stretched out so that it covers the entire length of the hull with some kind of neat finish at the end so that it's not just a 90 degree corner. That would look really horrible, I think. Aboard a boat, nothing is ever as simple as it sounds because the surface that I'm gonna be bolting those little brackets onto is not flat and it's not uniform. It varies throughout the length of the deck. So I'm gonna have to use a little digital level and grab a bunch of measurements. That in and of itself doesn't sound super annoying until you realize that to be able to grab those measurements, I need to figure out the position of each and every one of those little brackets and add to that the fact that there are some things here inside of the boat that I don't wanna mess with. For instance, the bulkheads and the knees, meaning I don't want to end up in a situation where one of the bolts from the brackets is located inside of this knee, for instance. Last week, I drilled and filled a bunch of holes for Athena's future cleats. Those holes are visible both here inside of the boat and up on deck, so I can use those as a point of reference. So I'll measure the distance from one of those holes to the bulkhead and also to the knee. And now I know the position of both the knee and the main bulkhead. All of these blue pieces of tape represents a place where I do not want to put a bracket. I've added some little wooden blocks. Those represent the location of each of the brackets. I will need 11 for each side. I've double checked my spacing and I'm happy with the result. So now I can go ahead and grab the angle of the deck hole joint at each of those wooden blocks. 88.8. 2, 87.3, 88.0. Believe it or not, this piece of cardboard represents three hours worth of work, but I've now got all the measurements, both for the starboard side and the port side. The astute will note that Athena is probably not sitting completely level in her cradle and they would be correct. When I started rebuilding all of the interior, of course, I needed to figure out what was actually level here inside of the boat so that countertops and seats would not be at some kind of weird angle. Using a digital level, I measured the angle of a bunch of different places, like for instance, the forward bunk here, the little vanity in the forward cabin, the starboard side of the compression post, and the aft side port bunk, which is currently covered in a bunch of junk. I averaged out all of those measurements and then that became my definition of level. And then whenever I started building something new, like for instance, the kitchen island, I would grab new measurements just to check to see if the boat had moved. Using that system, I know that Athena's port side is elevated by 0.5 degrees, which is nothing over a short distance. So yeah, but I might as well stick to my system. I'm going to grab my very valuable piece of cardboard here with my measurements on it. And uh, then I'm gonna have a little chat session with my friend Ken, who helps me design all of the stainless stuff here aboard Athena. Like for instance, the beautiful tank that's currently sitting behind the main engine and also all of the shiny bits for the new pedestal. Hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll be able to show you guys a CAD drawing of these little brackets and some of them are gonna have integrated stanchion bases and maybe we can come up with other cool stuff. We'll see. Since publishing last week's video, I have glued and screwed the top on the little generator area here. This all feels rock solid now. All that's left to do is just to tab it in place. Getting everything tabbed to the hull is the only thing keeping me from moving this task into the done column, but yeah, just hold on a minute. 
Ta-da! Now you guys can actually see what's on the tasks. Someone was kind enough to send me some Sharpies. I don't know if it's okay to mention your name, so I'll just say thank you. The tasks that I've just marked with a little piece of blue tape are the ones that are currently impeded by something else. Like for instance, I'm waiting to get the rudder back from the machine shop. I'm waiting for the backing plates for the cleats, waiting for parts for the generator. I haven't ordered a new prop yet and so on. Behind the scenes, I am working to get rid of the impediments and I think I am still on track to getting Athena back in the water in October. But enough procrastination, let's get to some sanding and fiberglass work. Waiting for the hummingbirds to fly by Sitting peacefully in the morning light Ta-da! And that is the last bit of work in here I need to take care of before Athena's ready to go back in the water. And that means I can move this guy over here. Prepping to and laying up glass is very time consuming and once you've tried it more than once it gets kind of mind numbing. To help preserve my sanity I listen to audiobooks and that brings us to the sponsor of this video. Audible. I've been an Audible member for over six years and I absolutely love it. I listen primarily when working aboard Athena, but I also listen on long drives or sometimes when walking my dog. You can download the audiobooks and then you can listen anywhere, anytime. I very much hope that Athena will remain a surface vessel forever, but right now I am listening to Thunder Below, which is a first-hand account of submarine warfare during the Second World War. It is absolutely fascinating and well worth a listen. I'll include a list of some of my other favorite audiobooks down in the description. Audible wants to give members more content to enjoy, so members can now download all of the Audible monthly selections. Members also have access to unlimited wellness programs, including some popular sleep programs that can help you wind down in this stressful time. As the world starts to confront new challenges like social distancing and school closures, everybody is looking for ways to reduce stress and stay entertained. Stories entertain, teach, and help keep our minds active. That's why Audible has launched stories.audible.com, where anyone, anywhere can stream hundreds of titles completely free, no strings attached. You don't need to be an Audible member to listen to these free stories. There's no need to download an app, sign up, or log in. Just go to stories.audible.com and then you can start streaming and listening. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. If you want to become an Audible member, then you should go to audible.com slash saylife or text saylife to 500, 500 That way you'll get one free audiobook, unlimited Audible originals, and a 30-day free trial. It is sweltering hot here, but 20 minutes ago I finished applying the very last coat of epoxy primer to all of the fared areas of the hull. That is awesome news because that means I'm ready to start applying the undercoat for the Perfection Pro. Or that's to say I am almost ready. As you might be able to see, there's a tiny bit of texture in the areas where I've applied the epoxy primer. Before I start applying the Perfection undercoat, it is very very important that I sand everything silky smooth. Any imperfections are going to show up. The weather next week looks really good and I am sure I've just jinxed myself. But right now the weather forecast looks very promising. So promising in fact that if that forecast holds then I should be able to completely finish painting the hull next week. I'll get back to sanding the epoxy primer tomorrow morning when it's not like the freaking surface of the sun here. For now, there's something else I want to prep for. And that is to install all of the through holes below the waterline. Here I've got two different versions of through holes. I've got one in bronze and one in fiberglass reinforced nylon. Both are, at least in my opinion, good valid options. They both have their upsides and their downsides. For instance, the bronze is a little bit more expensive, it's heavier, and it's also subject to galvanic corrosion. The fiberglass reinforced nylon ones are lighter, cheaper, not subject to galvanic corrosion, 
But then again, the bronze is probably going to take more of a beating. The fiberglass reinforced nylon ones, or the plastic ones, are from a company called True Design. I've got the same ones aboard Oblix, and they've served me very well for the past seven years. The bronze one is from a US-based company called Groco. They've got a great reputation. They're a little bit on the expensive side, but a great reputation. As you can see, I've already got a backing pad for the Groco one. True Design recommends that if the hull is less than 20 millimeters, then you add a backing pad to bring it up to at least 20 millimeters. Where I'm going to be installing these, the hull is just around 15 millimeters, so I need some kind of backing pad, and that is what I want to make today. When it comes to a choice of material for the backing pads, I think it's going to be hard to beat fiberglass. Sure, it would be easier to use something like wood, but then you're stuck with an organic material that could potentially start rotting somewhere where that would be very bad news. I've got a bunch of this fiberglass left over from when I vacuum infused the new rudder, and I don't really know what to use it for, so it's going to turn into backing pads. It's the next day and this thing is now solid, solid as a rock. Now I just have to turn this square looking thing into backing pads. I think there can be no doubt that these are going to be far superior to any kind of wooden backing pad, and all in, including laying up the laminate, these only took about an hour to make. With the exception of two through holes, all of the through holes are going to be located right here underneath the cabin sole. Pardon the dust, it is the maid's day off. Now down here, the through holes are going to be very well protected, yet easily accessible. This is just a little test fit to make sure I place the ball valve so that the handles can open and close. You can also also get T handles for these, but I couldn't find them in stock anywhere. I will leave the drill poking out of my little pilot hole to make it easier to find the hole on the outside of the hull. Yoink! Now as per the instructions, I'm going to be using a hole saw that is one diameter bigger than the diameter of the skin fittings. This is another little dry fit. The purpose of this is to trim the length of the skin fittings. I'm going to be adding these load bearing collars to the ball valves and with these in place, the plastic through holes adhere to the ABYC's H27 standard. I believe that is something like a static load of 500 pounds at the end of the hose bar about here for a minimum of 30 seconds. Before True Design introduced the load bearing collar, I don't believe they adhere to that H27 standard and that used to be one of the arguments to go with a bronze through hole. For the load bearing collar to seat properly against the backing pad and the ball valve, of course I need to trim the skin fittings and the instructions, I think they mention trimming them to between 15 and 20 millimeters. Yep, it's right here in the excellent installation instructions. For the three and a quarter inch, it is between 20 and 15 millimeters from the nut. It looks like they're all about 29 millimeters right now, so if I just take off a centimeter or so, we should be good. Ta-da! Hacksaw precision. That is all that should really be needed. As you can see, I've sanded away the paint underneath the backing pads, and that's because I'm gonna be epoxying them to the hull and I'm also gonna be epoxying the skin fittings to the hull. Using epoxy for the skin fittings is listed as an option in the instructions. It's what I did about Oblix and it's worked out very well so far but I do not think it's a good idea to use epoxy to bet the bronze ones. I want to make absolutely sure that I've trimmed the skin fittings to the correct length and it's kind of difficult to grab accurate measurements in there so I've made myself a little measuring doohickey that I can simply just put in there and wiggle around. That way I know this is less than 20 millimeters. Using my little Wonder stick, I have checked all of the skin fittings and they're perfect. Next up is just to make sure that the skin fittings are rotated so that the handles, when I tighten this down, face 
out. I've got two through holes on the starboard side and two on the port side. Only one of the four actually by coincidence lined up the way I wanted it to. I made myself a little drawing that shows me how much I need to rotate each of the skin fittings. Uh, so let's mark these positions and see if I got it right. Now I can loosen the nut on the inside and then if I line up this line with this line then the orientation should be correct. Starboard side check port side check i think we're all set to start epoxying things in place and seeing as it is a tad blistering here today i am definitely going to go with the slow hardener five pumps should easily get me through the first two and then just a pinch of 406 this seems like a good consistency to me. If at all possible, I would like to avoid getting thickened epoxy on the threads above the backing pad. That is one down, and the second one is not far behind. That's all for skin fittings epoxied in place. A little bit later today, once the epoxy has gelled, they can go ahead and screw the ball valves onto the skin fittings. As you can see, all of these have wires coming out of them. This will tell me whether or not these are closed or open. It's a somewhat gimmicky feature and it's definitely not something I absolutely need, but they were on sale and I figured I might be able to do something fun with that information later on. I could make an app that'll tell me whether or not I've remembered to close all of the through holes before leaving the boat, or maybe an app that'll pester me to exercise the ball valve once it's been in a certain state for, for instance, two weeks. Like I said, definitely not need to have, but I figured it might be fun to make. So yeah, we'll see what comes of it. I have one more of these to fit. This is gonna be the sink for the drain, but you guys have already seen me do the other four. So I'm just gonna do this one off camera. I finished installing that through hole that's gonna be for the sink in the galley. And I figured it'd be nice to have that located directly underneath the sink so that there's less chances of clogging. With this guy, there are two different ways of installing him. You can either through bolt him through both the backing pad and the hull, or you can just secure him to the backing pad. This guy is in for a somewhat sucky existence. He's gonna be the overboard discharge for tank the poop. You might be wondering why I'm gonna go with a bronze through hole for this area. And it's simply just because the tank is gonna be located directly above the through hole. And in case the tank ever comes crashing down, which I don't think it is, but if it does, I'll feel better knowing that this is a bronze through hole. The backing pad comes with three little inserts that you're supposed to hammer into place. Um, <laughs> so I've been all concerned about making mistakes today because it's very warm here, but turns out I made a mistake months ago. Uh, these two, no worky worky. The skin fitting has a larger diameter than the hole in the ball valve, so yeah, this is not gonna work. And of course, I had just finished drilling the hole in the hull when I noticed this, so now I have a slightly oversized hole in my hull. It looks like I ordered this with a one and a quarter inch threading, and this is one and a half, so yeah. Hopefully I can just bump this up to a one and a half and get a hose part fitting on here that'll still fit 38 millimeter hose. That's a little bit of a setback for my plans this weekend, but I can still go ahead and get these installed. As a thread sealant, I'm gonna use a dab of Sigaflex. Good morning, guys. It is Sunday morning. I got here about an hour ago and I've just spent that time wiping down the hull to get rid of the condensation or dew from the night. Today is gonna to be a great big oh glorious sanding day. I'm gonna be sanding all of the primed areas with 240 grit to get rid of that texture I showed you a little bit earlier. It's gonna be a hot, sweaty, dusty mess. While I didn't get all of the through hulls installed this week, the ones I did get installed seem to be in perfect working order. So that's good. I checked last night and I can indeed get this in a one and a half inch version with also a 38 millimeter hose barb. So yeah, 
I'm just gonna order that and then the hole and hull is perfect the way it is. And of course now I've got this beautiful 200 and some odd dollar trophy to celebrate my inability to order the correct stuff. It's okay, mistakes happen. The only frustrating thing here is that that little mistake is keeping me from moving this task into the done column and I'm gonna have to wait a few weeks to do that until the new through hall shows up. But uh, yeah, enough through hall stuff, let's get to some sanding. I got a great little tip from my technical advisor at Axo Noble and that was to draw some lines on the hull to help me just make sure that I check all of the areas. I believe this epoxy primer is going to sand fairly easily but uh, there's only one way to find out. You gotta plug the thing in also. They really should put that in the manual. The name of the game here is of course to remove as little primer as possible, but still get an absolutely silky smooth surface. As you can see here, I've still got a little bit of texture just so you can compare the surfaces, but uh, this is gonna get hidden by the chain plate, so that's not a big deal. Other than that, this is silky, silky smooth. We'll get back to the painting, the products, and all of that in much more detail in next week's video. For now, I just want to get in as much time as I can sanding before the great big burning ball of fire gets too high in the sky. It is 11 o'clock and I am done sanding the port side, except for the uh, little strip up on deck. That I'm gonna have to do by hand because there are a lot of curves there, but the major surface of the hull here on the port side is done. With the primer now blended in a little bit more, I'm starting to get a really good sense of what Athena is gonna look like with her new paint job. She is, like I've mentioned before, gonna be Mediterranean white, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you think we need to add some go fast stripes or something like that? The astute will note that I still have the port side to contend with, but I think I'm gonna come back tonight around eight when the sun is low in the sky, because at that time of day, it's a lot easier to see any little imperfections. I'm thoroughly pleased with how Athena is coming along, and I'm very excited to start applying the last bit of paint next week. Now, the temperature is gonna be a challenge for me because I'm used to living in a colder climate. I'm not used to working in this blistering heat we have right now, but with a little bit of luck, maybe, maybe I can finish painting next week. I'm going to get busy editing this week's video here in front of my new friend, Mr. Fan. He is freaking awesome. But uh, I hope to see all of you guys back here about Athena next week for uh, yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.